got it. I think it's it. So we'll cover. Yeah, well done. It's always here. Great. And Asha's reading.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Community United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rebecca Cho. And we gather today on this first Sunday in Lent. And so I hope that we can enter into this season of Lent, these 40 days, getting closer and closer to God as we follow along with Jesus, follow in his footsteps. And I'd like to invite Abby to open us in prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, we are constantly faced with temptations. You, Lord, have come to our aid. You teach us, counsel us, and guide us in the ways we should go. We rejoice in your unfailing love. Amen. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Happy Happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Happy are those who receive God's mercy. Rejoice and be glad, you upright in heart. Shout for joy, you people of God. Let us worship the one who gives us strength to resist temptation in the wilderness of our lives. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Please. Please remain standing and join me in singing hymn number 2105, Jesus Tempted in the Desert.
Please be seated. Let us come to God together in humility and grace as we share in our prayer of confession. We keep silent before you, Lord. We are afraid to confront our transgressions. We are terrified to face the reality of our sin. In your steadfast love, forgive us. In your Holy Spirit, restore us. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. Let's open our spirits to these words of assurance. The Lord hears the prayers of a faithful heart. God has become our hiding place, our refuge from trouble. No harm can touch us here. The Lord wraps us up in her arms of salvation. Amen. It's now time for our children's message. So if our youth and our young at heart would like to come forward, and let's welcome up, welcome up to the front with uh, Jesus Loves Me. Green lights on. There we go. School vacation's over. What'd you all do for fun? Do anything fun for the week? What'd you do? Oh, cool. In Maine or New Hampshire? In New Hampshire. Alec, what'd you do for fun? <laughs> Alec saw Hamilton. Wow. I am so jealous. I have not seen it yet. How about you girls? Did you do something fun? Abby went on the ski trip too? Yeah. I had a fabulous weekend last weekend. I was in Maine. And my family owns a big farm and we have a huge big hill in the back where we can slide, snowboard, ski. And we have all kinds of snowmobiles that haul everybody back up the hill again. And we had a bonfire. And we had fireworks, because in Maine they're legal. So a few weeks ago, Mr. Andy talked about nature and how important nature is to us. So I thought about this week when I was up on the hill sliding and the sun started to set and there was this amazing sunset. And then all of a sudden we looked up and there was a rainbow. So I thought, hmm. I wonder if someone is trying to tell us something. Do you think God speaks to us through nature? What do you think? You think he does? I think so. This morning when I was backing out of my driveway, there was a beautiful cardinal on my bird feeder. And we all know that cardinals come to us to remind us that there's people that we love that we may have lost that are still here watching over us by sending us a cardinal. And if you look real close when you're out inside, even though it's still winter, there are some tiny, tiny little buds on some of the trees because they're so confused when it's 60 degrees one day and 30 the next. So I think it's really important for us to know that nature tells us a story every single day. So can you think of one thing one thing, this whole week when you were off and you didn't have to go to school and you could sleep late, what's one thing that nature brought to you? What's one thing you saw this week in nature that was special? Oh, come on. None of you went outside this week? Snow. How about when you were at the top of that mountain? 
How about when you were on the top of the mountain getting ready to ski down? What did you see? And were they covered with snow? And it looked like a winter wonderland? Okay. Did anybody go someplace warm this week at all? Nobody went any place warm? No? But I think it's just really important for all of us to remember that every single day when we wake up and we look out the window, we're either going to see a sunrise, which I see almost every morning and it's really beautiful, or we're going to see clouds, or we're going to see stars. Last night I watched the clouds move away and the moon come out. So there's always something in nature that lets us know that God is watching over us and he's telling us in his own words, in his own way, that there's a reason to move on with your day, even if it's cloudy. So just always remember that God's watching over you and he gives you a sign every single day, okay? So think about that. When you go outside today, look around you. Just look and see what's there that you maybe didn't see yesterday, okay? All right. I think there's something special going on with the Sunday school today. Should we keep it a secret or should we tell? Should we should tell? Do you want to tell? You don't know? Okay, I guess it's going to be a secret then unless Miss Ginger wants to share. No, she doesn't. Okay, okay. let's... Uh oh. <laughs> All right, let's stay. It's another thing that's telling us that there's a reason we still need to be here this morning, even if something's going wrong. So let's take a few minutes and share a little prayer with each other this morning, okay? Dear God, our Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for these beautiful faces that join us every Sunday morning. I'm grateful for those who take part in the services. As I have said so many times, they are the future of this church. We need to love them, cherish them, nurture them, and let them know that they are so worthy of being here with us. Watch over them, protect them, and bring them back to us. In God's name, amen. Off to Sunday school. Thank you. The scripture lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us now sing the Gloria Patri.
This morning marks the first Sunday in the season of, season of Lent. Um, on Ash Wednesday, some of us gathered here to mark the, the very beginning of Lent, receiving a, a sign of a cross of ashes on our foreheads. The 40-day season of Lent is a time for deepening our relationship with God and connecting with other Christians. This morning we heard the Matthew passage in which Jesus spends 40 days out in the wilderness fasting and was tempted by Satan at the end of that period. The 40-day period of Lent is modeled after this time that Jesus spent in the desert. One focus that we might have during this Lenten season is a rejection of the powers of evil of this world, a rejection of the temptations that we ourselves might face and we might model our own reactions after Jesus' way of facing and overcoming temptation. We can also push away from us the temptations that we might face in our own lives. And at the same time that we are pushing away the evil powers of this world, we can draw nearer to God and give God more power and influence over our lives. Lent can be a special time for us to reflect on our own sinfulness, to consider the ways in which we have strayed from God, and to repent of our sinful ways, and then seek out and experience God's forgiveness. This holy season of Lent can be a gift for us, a time to really focus on our relationships with God. Let's take a, look, a closer look at the three temptations that Jesus faced and think about how they might apply to us. The first was that after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was famished. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, the tempter claims that bread is what gives you life, that that is what you need most. You need to satisfy your physical needs and desires first. But Jesus says, no, we really live with God's words. We are spiritual beings before we are physical beings. Bread alone cannot make us live. Don't be fooled. The temptation for us to fulfill our physical needs first is a constant one because, of course, we need to eat, we need to fulfill our, our physical needs. Jesus was also fully human and needed to eat. But we have to understand that we need to be filled spiritually even before being filled physically. Jesus had reached the end of his 40 days of fasting in the wilderness, and it was almost time for Jesus to eat again. But I think he was waiting for God to tell him that it was time to eat. And instead, it was Satan, the tempter, who tried to get him to break his fast. We all have physical needs, but we should fill our spiritual needs first. That will help us to distinguish what we actually need and what we only think we need. In our physical lives, what is it that we actually need in order to survive? When we really think about it and try to make a list, we realize that there aren't that many things that we need. We need clean water, we need enough food to eat, we need shelter, clothing, companionship. But we often fool ourselves into believing that we need a whole lot more than that. And we're not just tempted, but we actually fall into, the, fall into our temptation sometimes. And we even sometimes, whether intentional or not, might tempt others to maybe think that they need more than they need, maybe uh, showing them the, the latest gadget that we have, encouraging them to get it, or uh, perhaps someone is trying to be careful what they eat and we offer them something particularly tempting. And we're not trying to, uh, to really tempt the other person. We're not trying to sabotage them. Um, but it's just kind of a natural thing that we do sometimes. We are often tempted by the various um, products and all of the, the advertisements that, that we see and uh, things that we think might uh, really make our lives better. But when we really think about it, we might recognize that a lot of these things are, are not needs, but instead are wants. And we know that children are 
maybe not any more susceptible than adults, but are also susceptible to those kinds of temptations. I think about uh, the commercials that the kids see on TV. Uh, my son saw one the other day for this uh, kind of candy dispenser that he thought looked really cool and thought he, he definitely wanted that, even though I told him, um, you know, the gummy candies in there aren't going to taste any better than any other gummy candies just because they come from that dispenser. And, and I know that it'll end up, it would end up probably in the trash pretty quickly after getting it. But all of us are kind of tempted in that way many times to think, thinking that some of the things of this world are more important than they really are. With his response to Satan, Jesus reminds us that nothing is more important than God and God's ways not even bread. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. God knows that we need all of these physical things, but we should start by thinking of God and seeking God's kingdom and everything else will follow. The second time, Satan says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. What Satan tempts Jesus to do is to, to have him think that God is under his control. You throw yourself down, at the time that you want and where you choose to, and then God will follow your lead and will send angels for you. This can be a temptation for us as well. There are times in our lives when we want to bend God's will in order to make God do something that we desire. Now, at the same time, the disciples were told by Jesus that if they had faith the size of a mustard seed, they would even be able to move mountains. So that might suggest to us that we can ask God for anything, and as long as we have faith, then God will do it. But here, we seem to be told not to demand signs or to put God to the test. Let's consider the story about Peter when he was in the boat and saw Jesus walking on the water toward him. Peter asked Jesus to command him to come, and Jesus did. And as a result, Peter had the faith to be able to step out onto the water and walk toward Jesus. But when a strong wind came, he started to get scared and he started to sink. And he called out to Jesus to save him. And what did Jesus do? Jesus reached out his hand to Peter and together they walked back to the boat. Peter was able to experience the miracle of walking on water with Jesus when he had faith but what I think really enabled him to do it was not only his faith, but in addition to that, Jesus was the one who called to him and said, come, or reached out his hand to him. We might be tempted to demand signs and miracles. We might be the ones who are like Satan saying to God, you promised to save me, so now I want you to prove it. This can be natural for us, especially if we're in a stressful or difficult situation. But there is something important we need to wait for, and that is for Jesus to reach out his hand to us. We have to realize that God is the one in control and not us. We can experience great miracles, but it is God and not us who leads the way and will determine when and how that will happen. There's nothing wrong with us asking. We're told, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. But what we ask for must also coincide with God's will. The third temptation by Satan was, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only God. This temptation for power is quite a universal one, and we might be able to understand this one well. We might think, well, Jesus was already powerful. He already knew that he was the son of God. 
But for us, the temptation could be even greater. We want to have some power. We don't want to be vulnerable and, and powerless. Who doesn't feel tempted by worldly success and want to be viewed as important by others? These are very common temptations for us. And yet we too must follow Jesus' example and remind ourselves over and over again that we are to worship and serve only God. As Jesus said in Matthew 6.24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. I'm sure that all of us have experienced let's say at least one of these three temptations, uh, but I would say likely we've experienced all of them, all three of them. We've been tempted sometimes to put our physical needs and desires before God. We've been tempted to test God. We've been tempted to seek wealth and material gain over God. And we have been not only tempted, we have actually fallen into temptation many times. Well, the bad news for us is that we will keep on being tempted. And many times we will keep falling into these temptations. And we hope that we will get better um, over time and that those times of temptation will decrease. But the truth is that no one will be able to do it perfectly because we are all sinful human beings. But let's also look to the end of the story about the temptation of Jesus and see the message of hope for us. After the final temptation, Jesus told Satan to go away, and he did. And then we are told that suddenly angels came and waited on him. In the same way, although we will continue to experience temptation, we can know that God is always there watching over us, hoping that we will make right choices, and also ready to send angels to minister to us, to comfort us, and to provide us with what we really need. Temptations will come, but with God's help, we will be able to make the right choices. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join with me in singing, Shepherd Me, O God which is found in the Faith We Sing, number 2058. In the Faith We Sing, we, we only have these uh, few words that are a refrain for this song, and so we will sing, sing this four times. Please stand if you are able. time for us to share our joys and our concerns and to witness to any place that we have seen God acting in our lives in the past week. Yes, Paula, uh, hold on, let me get you a microphone. Good morning. 
I'd like to share with you where God was present in my life this week. Um, I have an estranged relationship with my only sibling, who's a sister. And it's made me very sad over the years that um, something has come between us that I really don't have an idea what that is. I have some ideas, but I, she's never talked to me about it. Anyway, and so um, I decided that um, once again this year, I would reach out to her. And I would write her notes. And I would um, try to let her know that I was sorry for whatever had happened in our life that I wanted to be her sister and be active. And so I have heard nothing um, this year. And yesterday on an email I got, it was a story from her daughter saying that my sister's husband of 57 years had a diabetic emergency on Friday night, was taken to the hospital, and had to have his leg amputated due to sepsis. And this is a man who was a football star in high school who um, had um, a, a job making automobile tires. You know, a very physical man. And I know that this will be very hard on him because of that. And because they've been married so long, I know that it will be hard on her too. So I reached out and I sent a message to her daughter and I also sent a message to her. And I think this was God's way of tapping me on the shoulder to say, don't give up. You know, it, it might not happen the way I want it to happen, but don't give up. So I, I ask you for prayers for Tom and Pam Goddard. Thank you so much for sharing. And we do lift up Tom and Pam in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Irene. Um, her husband passed away this past Thursday. And I want prayers for her and for the entire Preston family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'll lift up um, prayers, mostly a, a prayer of joy for um, next weekend. My daughter, Evelyn, will be going to um, what's called Camp Berea Deep Freeze. This was an offering by the Sudbury United Methodist Church asked if any of the, the youth of the, of the right age uh, would like to join them this year to, to this activity that they do um, every year. Um, Evelyn was the only one who was able to go. And the church is um, providing a very nice scholarship for her to be able to go to that. So uh, I thank you on, on her behalf. Um, but I hope it'll be a great experience for her. Um, it's in Meredith, New Hampshire, and it sounds like they've got a great facility where they do all kinds of different outdoor activities like tubing and, and different things. And they also have um, high energy worship services for all of the kids who are there. And I just, I hope it's a great experience for her and for all of the, the youth from the Sudbury United Methodist Church who attend that. So I lift them up in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I request prayer for my, one of my colleagues fell uh, in the parking lot and both, uh, broke both tibia and fibula. So, yeah, she's only in her 50s. And what's her name? Terry Spencer. We lift up Terry in our prayers after her fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. There was something in the message today that made me think how different the world is today from the world that I grew up in. An example is that when I was a young boy, a big thing used to be to lay under the radio, which was a big console, and listen to uh, 
the radio, uh, what was his name, Silver, Silver Bullet or uh, high -O Silver or some other thing. And today, the kids take TV for granted and just look at it and communicate and the young ones, or not young ones, pull a phone out of their pocket and dial up anything they want to dial up about uh, <clears throat> the world. All the history and uh, uh, new things in the world. And, uh, anyway, I started thinking about that during the message and how different my own living as a boy or a child is from the children of today. Thank you. I'd like to share with you a joy that um, Polly Athanas celebrated her 99th birthday on Wednesday. Uh, so I had a chance to, to visit her on that day and uh, bring greetings on the church's behalf. Um, the balloons were already there, so somebody else had given her the balloons, and she was sitting right behind the, the, um, the front desk, and as people walked by, everyone was greeting her and saying, Happy birthday, Polly, and um, I think it was a good, a good birthday for her, but uh, just lift up that joy. Are there any others to share? As Alex said, we, um, he and I went to see Hamilton on Friday night in Boston, and it was a, a, just a great time for mom and son to be out and about in the city of Boston and exploring and, and doing things and just being together and laughing together. And so that's the joy that we had. And the Hamilton, the show was excellent. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful, and I'm just thinking of like a couple of years ago at the Walk for Hunger of Alex listening to Hamilton, and like I think he knew all the words, so I'm sure that was a big thrill for him. That's great. Well, he told me that I can't sing. He said, I'm lucky that I didn't invite the lady in front of us who's Thank you all for your sharing, and let us be in a spirit of prayer. Loving and merciful God, we thank you for the many gifts and blessings that you have given to us. Lord, we are often tempted, tempted by, in many ways, tempted to, to think that we don't have enough, um, tempted to desire more for ourselves, more power, more material possessions. We're tempted in many ways, Lord, and we thank you for the example that we have in Jesus uh, who overcame temptation. And we pray that we can be inspired and that we too can find ways of overcoming the temptations in our lives. And first to recognize what are temptations that take us away from you and from loving and serving you. Lord, we pray that you would bless each of us, that you would strengthen us in all of the gifts that you have given to us so that we can find our own ways of working toward building your reign on this earth. And Lord, we know that you have heard all of the joys and the concerns that we have spoken today, and we lift up also those silent prayers of our hearts, knowing how much you care. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to pray, saying the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. At this time, we reflect on the many gifts and blessings that we each have and also our call to share those gifts and blessings. We've talked today about meeting the physical needs that we all have. Many of our mission work is meeting those physical needs of shelter, and food. But keep in mind that in sharing those and meeting the needs of others, beyond even meeting their physical needs, we are certainly meeting their spiritual needs. We are showing people dignity when we share and give to them. We are showing them love and caring and meeting those very fundamental humane aspects that is talked about in scripture. So thank you for your generosity in giving to this church, giving us as a community an ability to lift up others, to recognize their spirit. We're grateful for what you've given so far and we invite you to continue to support this church either by leaving donations here or pledges in our collection plates or you can mail them into the church office. Bearing that in mind, let's stand together and lift up our doxology. in our prayer of dedication. In the hour of his temptation, when Jesus hungered, he knew from where his sustenance came. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Lord, from the abundance of your grace, you have provided all that all that we have is you. Receive these offerings in the gratitude of our hearts. Amen. Please be seated. There are lots of great announcements today. It just kind of reflects the, the connections we have here in, in this church and the uh, activities that we're all engaging in to build our own spirits and the spirits of this community. Um, just a reminder, we continue to collect money for UMCOR for disaster relief. Um, that's the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And I have to tell you, right now we're very mindful of some of the more immediate challenges that the world faces following the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. But if you would take a moment at some point and go to the UMCOR website, it is amazing and inspiring to see the depth and range of causes and relief work that's being done by our very own Methodist Church. Um, every day there's relief being provided for victims of, of significant weather events, of war, um, of tragic natural disasters. So we can be proud of that and we can also be generous in continuing to support this work. So thank you. And just a, a footnote, if you did want to leave a check um, that you specifically want to go to UMCOR, you can make that out to our church, CUMC, but in the memo line, please indicate that that's a specific offering for UMCOR, and that'll get to where you expect it to go. Um, in more mission work, this week is our Family Promise Host Week. Um, Appreciate all the volunteers who have stepped forward to offer meals and, and some community with the folks that are being cared for in Family Promise. So this is our week. All those slots are filled and uh, we're grateful that we can provide a, a, a robust week for um, the folks that we're supporting there. Also there's a safety team meeting on Monday, February the 27th at 730 
Um, and this is a very exciting time of the year because our, um, some of our Lenten programming is beginning. There is a five-week Lenten Bible study beginning on Tuesday, February the 28th at 6 p.m. That will be on Zoom, and people are very welcome to participate and join in. Also, our Lenten suppers are beginning this week, which uh, is always an inspiring and meaningful time for folks that attend. So those are held right here in our fellowship hall. Um, not only is it a good meal, but it's good fellowship, and it's always interesting to hear one of us among the congregation speaking about their faith journey. So again, that begins this Thursday, March the 2nd, and that'll, that uh, will start at 6 o'clock. 5.30. 530. Sorry. No, it's, I know it's wrong in there. No problem. I changed it in here. Good for you. Good job. <laughs> She's on it. <laughs> so 5.30. So come early and get in the soup line or you'll miss it. <laughs> um, I'll just share a few more announcements. Um, so next Sunday, we're going to have a session um, that we're calling the Bible and homosexuality. This is um, a number of us had, had read the book Unclobber and uh, we'd like to share some of what we learned with with you and uh, open it to questions as well. So that's going to be um, uh, after church uh, around 1130 perhaps um, also or maybe a, a little bit later than that. Um, so since you might want to stay after church, um, we're going to have a little fundraiser, another fundraiser for the youth mission trip, which is um, going to be uh, my own crockpot mac and cheese, which I know some of you have enjoyed before, so I'm going to make some of that. I'm not taking pre-order, so I'm not sure exactly how many it will serve, but you can buy a meal of macaroni and cheese and broccoli and a roll, and um, we'll ask for donations for that. Um, just to let you know, the I don't know if I, I updated you, the last fundraiser that we had, which was for the Super Bowl food, we raised um, $275, which was a great start to our fundraising efforts, and there will be more to come. There might be another meal on March 12th, but I don't have details on that, because on March 12th, we're going to have a program called The Profits We Share, um, where myself, I, I will talk about um, some of the profits of the Bible, and Shaheen Akhtar from the Islamic Center will talk about um, prophets in Islam. So that should be interesting. That's going to be March 12th. Uh, and then also just trustees meeting Monday, March 6th at 7 p.m. I think that's all. Were there any other announcements to share? All right. If not, let's join together in singing Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days, number 269 in the hymnal. And please stand if you're able.
now let us go forth from this, this place in the strength of God's spirit. God will strengthen us to do whatever it is God calls us to do and to overcome whatever temptations we face. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.